This third session is about investment opportunities portfolio and um, diversification for female. All right. So still on Shola, um, Shola Deshaki, I'll be coming to you. What are those um, investment opportunities that women can take? You, you said something earlier when you were mentioning Quest um, about women's risk um, portfolio. I know very much that women are not so um, prone to taking risk. As a matter of fact, it has to be zero or little risk. So what are those investment options that are available um, for women to, 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 to vie into? All right, thank you so much, Solo. Um, um, as, as a founder of an investment club, and, um, you know, we have seen a lot of things in the last two or three or four years. Mm. Before I start to talk about investments for women, what we should like for my money, I, I, I want to appeal to everybody on this call to make out time to understand the concept of investing. Mm. First of all, I am begging you because um, we have seen many stories that, that touch the act. Mm. Um, I have seen relationships go sour. I have seen people lose their life savings. I have, I mean, I've, I've been to court in my life in the last two years more than I've ever been. In fact, places I've never been to have been there mm. because of this issue of investing. So I would say before you start to invest, consider your financial situation, consider your goals, which we talked about earlier on, consider your age, and consider your risk temperament. Now, don't invest. I mean, somebody comes to meet you, somebody who earns a million naira comes to meet you, yeah, there's one investment somewhere, you have to give them 200,000. Don't forget that 200,000 out of 1 million is what percentage? 20% for that person. You, any 100,000 will not go and take your two months savings and go and put it in the safe. If it fails, that person still has a buffer. So you must invest based on your investment, on your financial capacity. Your goals are important. Your age is important. Somebody who is 40 or 50 cannot invest the way a 25 year old can invest. Or somebody who is in pre-retirement phase. And of course your risk temperament. Hmm. Some people are very conservative. They don't want to lose their money. Some people are moderate and some people are aggressive there are tinier tinier subs in between those three categories of risk um, temperament but i just wanted to make you realize that it is not just about the doing you must know and um, i also wanted to say something about investments being no risk or you know there's no investment that is no risk mm. anywhere else. Now, we coaching, we say, yeah, some are low risk. I totally agree. But even the lowest of the lowest risky investments could, could actually turn out bad. For example, in Ghana, they issued some, tell you, some bonds you know, recently in which they have defaulted. In Nigeria, our government will say, yes, saving bonds. But government can fail. Look at the case of Venezuela. So any money or any investment you do, just you know, have it at the back of your mind that this money may come back and it may not come back. Mm. I just want to mention those things. So what are the things that we can invest in as, as female, as women in this age? I mean, maybe two years ago, my, my, the, the, the classes of investment I would have given would have been different, but I'm talking about what is currently happening. I know some of us are young and we still have a long time ahead of us, but this is what I would say. What asset classes would I suggest? Number one, cash and cash equivalent. Now, there are some risk, uh, the, the investments that are low risk, there are some that are high risk. Now, cash and cash equivalents will be like a uh, fixed deposit. It will be like your money market mutual funds, which of course a lot of asset management companies offer. What it means is that low risk and they are near cash. So when you need the money, you can easily say, you know what, I'm not doing it again, 30 days, I'm not doing it again, just give my money and you can turn it to cash. So you should have a bit of that in your portfolio. I call it your portfolio stabilizer. Do you see? When the money, when push comes to shove, you can just go back and say, I'm not doing again, giving my money. So that's one class. The second class is what I will call fixed income. Fixed income um, asset class. And they would include things like uh, saving bonds, treasury bills, treasury certificates. And they will tell you, why, why are they fixed income? They will tell you that you know, over the next one year, you're earning 18%. I know in Nigeria, they do a lot of, uh, the DMO, 
debt management of his issues, saving bonds from the government every month. You know, depending on your financial capacity, those are small things that you can start from. Mm -hmm. And then the good thing is that these days you can even do it in, in dollars. I mean, I've had a dollar mutual fund running with a particular bank for the last five years, and I've been building on it. Now, no, I'm not saying it is euro bond. It is fixed income dollar mutual fund because those things also, they could be tricky. You do some euro bonds, and then when you want to exit, the market is something, something. But this particular one is a dollar mutual fund that is low risk. So that's fixed income. The third asset class will be uh, stocks and equities. Uh, and I think for the long haul, I mean, this is quite risky in the sense that when you need to exit or when you need your money, the market might be unhappy or unpleasant at that time. But long, 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 long haul, you can buy equities, you know, either in Nigeria or, I mean, we teach foreign stocks, right? I see a question, but they said, um, how do I buy stocks? There are a number of apps that you can use to buy stocks from Nigeria, from Nigeria, US stocks. And the beautiful thing is that you can even buy stocks fractionally these days. So, you know, I mean, for example, Warren Buffett's company is called Berkshire Hathaway. And they are, the one single share is about $400,000, as of the last time I checked. But these days, you can buy $10 worth, $20 worth every month, and you start to stack it. You know, those companies that you like. I invest in companies that I use. Amazon, they sell my book when I go to the U.S., I pay them, so I buy their stocks. I've used iPhones in the last 13 years. I have, I, you know, just examples. I'm not saying that is what you should adopt, but there are apps that will help you buy some of those stocks here. And then you can buy ETFs. ETFs are exchange-traded funds. There's no time to go into that. You can read up on that, and you can do index funds within the stock uh, asset class. Another asset class is real estate. I mean, these days, the opportunities to crowdfund, right? If you can, of course, buy a land, buy a property by yourself. If not, look for people that you can, you know, together crowdfund and do some of those things. So, so those are the conventional asset classes. And of course you have commodities. Let's not even go into cryptocurrency. There are other things you can do. You can do angel investing. Uh, we have pulled funds together to, you know, invest in companies, startups, and all of that. But practically, if I wear my twenties, these days, I will do a lot of dollar mutual fund, and you know there, there are funds that you can start with one thousand dollars, and then you start to add to it incrementally, five hundred dollars. I will do ETFs, the good ETFs in the U.S. That you know what I want to hold them for the next twenty years. I will put a bit of my portfolio in cash and cash equivalent, so that when I need the money, I will always get it. But again, there's no hard and fast rule. Let me leave this as the final one. I I put up a question on our Facebook group yesterday, women. And I said, is gold still a viable investment? 16 years ago, I had a friend who kept buying gold. When I was doing my own shenanigans of spending, she kept buying gold. These days, she wants to travel. She just sells some, just one or two tiny ones, $5,000. So I, I think those are areas that we can also consider. But A, do your research, follow those who know, ask questions. Investing, personal finance, as the word implies, is personal, first of all. What suits you, what suits your goals, what suits your future plans, and all of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Shola Adeshaki. Um, you, you've, you've touched on quite a lot, a lot of things that I think um, I would just like to highlight a few. She talked about stocks, commodities. She talked about real estate. She talked about um, fixed income. But one thing that stood out for me in everything Shola said is um, financial journey is personal. personal yeah. And um, you have to be ready to take up that journey. So we can have sessions like these and um, teach women financial literacy, but it's very obvious that you have to be ready to go on that journey because you need all this knowledge. Even when people teach you how to invest, you still have to read up about it. Um, so I'm going to pick up one of the investment um, options that um, Shalade Shakin gave us, talking about angel investment. Um, Damilola, um, you're, you're the tech should I say tech guru here? So talking mm -hmm. about <laughs> talking about angel investments, right? Um, how do you see angel investors as being a viable option to invest in? And what are some of the privileges that that um, this amounts to for females? Damilola. Yes, um, at the early stage, um, 
angel investors are like, you know, uh, let's say some HNI, some professionals or mm -hmm. entrepreneurs that, you know, they've identified, um, you know, this part of um, investment as an opportunity to invest. And they know, because in fact, this one is even the highest risk. This is high risk, <laughs> high reward. Mm. Um, they know that, you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, um, a show of, you know, for example, for, for VC funding at the early stage, like seed or pre-seed, when angel investing, investors are investing, most times they don't, it's not an equity investment yet. So they're not even yet a shareholder. So is it that maybe they use a safe instrument or a convertible note? So it's just paper, you just send money and then you sign. So you don't even have, you don't even have evidence, you're not even in CAC document, you're not, if you don't have any share, you don't have any evidence of having shares in the company, but mm. you've invested. Um, and, you know, just hoping that you've made the right choice in investing in the right, you know, um, founder. So it's a, it's a good, you know, opportunity for, um, you know, female, female founders or male founders to access funding. Um, through their network, um, you know, get if you have ten people that can give you five k, that's already fifty k, and can help you take your business from maybe hundred customers to one thousand customers. Um, so I, I see a very huge opportunity there. I think if people now are even you know using their community to also raise funds um, as well. That's also you know um, in allowing your customers to be agile investors in your business as well yeah. as entrepreneurs. Myself, I've also invested in a friend that has a business in. Um, in the north, you know, he has um, a biogas, you know, um, solution. So it's, it's just, you know, two million, one million, five hundred k there that you can, you know, um, be part of, you know, a, a a startup because in four years or in five years, what that investment promises you is a possible exit either through um, um, selling the business or IPOing or even an additional funding. Uh, maybe at a, at a particular mouse so where you can exit all or part of your your fund. So I see it as a very good opportunity, either as an entrepreneur to invest or as um, as you know a founder that wants to get um, um, funding. I think there are also platforms like Get Equity now that individuals can go on take maybe like you know, ten thousand naira, twenty thousand naira. And be able to invest in businesses um, by you know crowdsourcing that fund together. So, yeah, it's a good opportunity to be part of you know um, VC um, funding. All right, thank you so much, um, Dami. I, I I see some of the opportunities or advantages of being an angel investor. And from what Dami said, there's no amount too little. So it's like you putting money somewhere. There are risks to it, definitely, but then in the long run, your money is working for you in terms of equities. So talking about um, funding, Damilola, um, I, I want to take you further in terms of funding because um, we don't just have entrepreneurs listening to this session. We have um, startup founders as well. So how, um, for short last, you raised the $1.6 million sometimes in 2000 and. Um, 21 yeah so how would yeah. you advise a, a startup founder a female now trying to raise funds how do they attract this investment opportunities to themselves um so i mean knowing my own journey i know and every person's journey is very peculiar to them it doesn't have to there's no one way that fits all right my own journey i tried to raise funds at the beginning i couldn't get funding um, and so I got three million naira. Um, I won a competition, so I got three million naira in grants. That was kind of like our first, you know, seed funding. Although we started before the three million naira, and along the line we also got some grants, right? Um, so that allowed us to. We've already generated that um, funding already in revenue um, before we even went to raise funds. Um, so I'm a believer of turning your customers to your investor. Um, because when you when for for seeking for investment, I do not also like when you know um, founders are at the mercy of the investors. You, you should not be desperate to get money, you know, from investors because it can easily easily be cheated. Because business is already hard. Hmm. Uh, doing this in Nigeria is already hard. You know, solving a problem that nobody has solved before is already hard. So bringing in um, an investor that you don't have probably the same aligned values, you know, that would maybe want to, mm. to control the business or control the founders okay. would just frustrate, you know, the founder and probably lead to the demise of the, of the, of the business. Mm. So I would say that you should, number one thing is to get 
good traction. And getting traction, number one is revenue in, and recurring revenue. Not okay that you have revenue in January. I'm not sure if you, I mean, in February is not, is not sure, you know, March is not sure. You used to have recurring revenue and recurring paying customers. That's when you know that you have a viable business. If, it's, if you have an app, you know, and you have a website, you have a nice pitch deck, but you don't have, um, you know, paid customers, you don't have revenue, mm. it's not yet a business. Mm. And with what, maybe if you're in Silicon Valley, maybe because it's even happening with um, the tech ecosystem, maybe right now, you know, maybe you might not even get funding, but maybe in the family like five years ago, they might fund ideas or maybe lofty ideas. But right now, with all the economic you know, downturn, with what's happening in Silicon Valley, happening in the tech ecosystem, people are, pe now investors are even looking, asking for, show us the path to profitability. Mm -hmm. It's no longer about, um, you can, the vanity metrics, I have 1 million users, I have 20,000 uh, um, downloads, yeah. I have 50,000, where, please show us the money, yeah. you know. So the, the traction is very important in hitting um, and attracting the right investors. There are other things that investors also look at. You know, the 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 the, the team, right? They don't also want you know, a key man risk because they are investing so much in you. They don't want the situation whereby when somebody is not available, the whole company fails, right? So the team is also important. Um, also, the product that you are trying to, um, the, the the business idea. How big is that market, and how is that business solution a panadol? or is a, is a surgery to a problem. You know, I heard this yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. How important is, is this problem and how big is that market? That will also determine the type of investors you attract and, and the type of amount as well you'll be able to attract as well. I think those three points will help, you know, any founder here to um, really, you know, position themselves for, for investment. And I, and I would say, you know, lastly about discipline. From day one, you know, we ensure that all our revenues we're passing through our business accounts. You know, if, if you know, if you cannot, the, most times, the person always say, oh, women don't know their numbers. They don't know their uh, revenue. They don't know their margin. They don't know. It just seems very simple. Mm. You know, cost, in selling price minus, minus cost price is equal to your margin. You know, you need to know the unit economics of your business. If you don't, if your investor asks you, somebody wants to give you 20 million naira, and they ask you, how much did you make last month? You don't know. How much did you make last, last year? You're not sure. Uh, how much was your um, margin? It, so how do you want them to be confident that if they give you 1 million naira, you can turn it into 10 million naira? So these are the small, small things that, you know, we as you know, female founders or male founders need to ensure that we put together and you know, to prepare us you know, for investment. All right. Thank you so much, Damilola, for sharing that experience. Um, major lesson to be learned there, um, I, I think, is the fact that don't run ahead of your pace. There are steps to raising funds, and you must ensure that you are at that right point where you are, um, where you're expected to raise funds before you start raising um, questions about raising funds. And she said something about ensure you have um, consistent inflow of revenue, right? And then you also have customers before you start raising funds. So we are, we are wrapping up um, very quickly. Start sending your questions into the Q&A chat box. Um, so we'll take one last um, question from um, Sholakwe. So Sholakwe, I'll come to you very quickly. And this is like a final question before we go into the Q&A session. And this is bringing down this conversation to everyday women's struggles, right? Um, um, we have women face responsibilities, siblings here and there, um, family demands. And of course, you still have to keep up as a woman to look good. And like they said, um, like, like they say, it always goes, it's, it's someone that has eaten that will be thinking of investment, right? So how, how can women think of long-term investment or um, what, what can they do? What measures can women put in place to save um, um, on, on a long term, considering the fact that the revenue or resources are not always available. Um, very quickly, Shalakwe. Yes, I'll still start from where you are, right? Um, most of the time when we look about making income, we typically look at it that, oh, I see people say, excuse I don't even have anything. Yeah. And I can go on and list about 10 things that you can do, mm. you know, um, without zero naira, without zero kobo. 
Um, I see people on social media, it comments on almost every post and all of that. You have that data, yet you still complain that you're broke. On that same social media, you can drop ship, for instance, mm. right? Um, you, get, you establish a supplier, you keep putting them on your WhatsApp status, on your Instagram, you identify buyer, the buyer pays, um, the payment is X plus one, you pay X to the supplier, the one becomes yours, right? So there are tons um, um, of, of, of um, um, opportunities out there. Then speaking about diversification, I also consider diversification investment as a good way of managing risks. And as said by the other panelists, you know, you have to examine your own risks. Typically, the way the risk works, it's a converse, you know, way. Most of the time with investments, the higher the returns, the higher the gains, so are the risks, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that when you're still young, you know, try as much as possible to, you know, um, if you can, and depending on, if you're young, you know, you can, um, um, you know, participate or still diversify in such a way that, okay, you have some, um, for instance, stocks are risky assets, for instance, but have some of those and all of that. But the moment you are going into your retirement um, phases and all of that, you want to be more careful, you know, and all. So I'll just say essentially that, yes, in making the funds, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of money. Um, you can start from where you are and start piling up. And then in managing, you know, your portfolio, always, always have the risk, um, um, the risk factor in each asset you're considering. Always have that in mind. Thank All right. You. Thank you very, very much, um, Shalakwe. If me, you'll agree with me. It's been a really, very really interesting, session, interesting yes. and insightful question. Yes. Um, but then we have a whole lot of questions to answer in the Q&A. Yes. So we already have a first question already. Um, someone is asking this question. She said um, he or she just put anonymous. She doesn't want us to know, he or she to know our name. Um, but the person said, um, please ask the speakers, where can a person of the age of 39 years old begin to invest her money into. So, um, Shalakwe Dablala, I don't know which one of you would like to take up that question. She wants to find out where she's 39, so where can she begin to invest her money into? Well, so this person to me sounds like someone who, and I hope I'm correct, who is, um, you know, quite new to the world of investing. So I'll say that, don't go it alone. Um, join... Um, investment communities, investment clubs, Smart okay. Tools is one, mm. um, Harvest is one, um, though we are more, um, we, create, we offer more of the tools, but trust me, Smart Tools does more of the handholding. So regardless of whichever one you join, you know, you are best, you are in great company, and you can be assured that you'll be guided, you know, towards investment that you can participate in. We've said it. Um, also, I'll just say to that person that you, you might want to start with fixed income. It is safer, you know, it is um, um, it's safer for a starter, you know, like yourself. So look at, you know, mutual funds around you, bonds, treasury bills, and all of that. And even though people will still say, you know, call investors to tell you that no matter what, every investment has a form of risk. But those, those are, you know, assets that have proven through the years that, you know, your capital and the gains on it is not eroded in any way. All right. Thank you so much, Shalakwe. Um, there, there's actually no right age to start saving. There's no age too early. There's also no age too late. So you can always start from wherever you are. So we also have a question here. Is it safe to save without a goal, considering the fact that you're disciplined with your saving? Um, I'd like Damilola to touch on that. Is it safe to save without a goal? To save without a goal. Yes. I mean, I mean, like what I said earlier. I, I feel like every we are driven by our, you know, um, like a goalpost. You know, um, I, I took part in a game where you know they, we, there's a puzzle, right? And they removed the the image that we're trying to put together. When you move the, the the image, you you really scramble. You don't really know what you're doing. But if you give it the image. 
then you're trying to put together, then you know what you're trying to do. And in five minutes, you start putting pieces together. That's the same thing about life. Like, if you don't know what you are aiming for, you would not really be able to measure or know if you're growing or not growing. So I think that the best thing is to have a goal um, so that you can know if you're going towards your goal or if it's reducing or if you're increasing or if you're growing or not. So I think the best thing is to have a goal towards savings, towards investment, towards running a business, towards everything in life, really. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Damalala. Um, I think it's going to be the last question because we have to round up this session before the 12 o'clock bulletin. So we have this question. Um, so Shalakwe, I think you just help us answer this question. The question is, has a single mother with children, I recently got to know about setting up a living trust as a form of investment that could help generate financial security for my children. I would very much appreciate your thoughts on this. Is this a safe option in Nigeria and what are the risks? Okay, so I saw this question I, and it got me curious. Um, the way it's presented here, it sounds like um, it's, a, it's an investment tool or an investment instrument. However, living trust is simply, you know, a legal document or a legal arrangement that you make while you are alive to say, okay, um, this is how I would want my, you know, assets or that I have be distributed amongst, you know, my children or whoever I want to pass them to. So just look at it like um, a will that you do and that, you know, um, activates while you're still alive. You don't like a will that you need to pass on before a will becomes active. So if that is the case, yes, certainly, um, there are so many, um, um, you know, um, trusty firms that are offering these services. So you simply need to walk into most of the financial, most of the investment firms out there have trusty, you know, desks. So you just have to walk into one and, you know, get the conversation started. But in, in a living trust by itself, you know, does not, um, you know, generate, you know, um, 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 as much um investments is not a tool for you know generating income as such i hope um shola do you want to pitch in there uh, yeah i think you've pretty much captured it trust is one there are also target savings for example my first son is 15 and he's going into uni next year um 15 yes he's going to buy Sometime next day, yes, he's going to get into uni. And we had started like a target savings for him a couple of years ago. So target savings would also help to say, you know what? My daughter, my son is this, 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 in a couple of years. You know, so trust is one. Target savings is another. Um, and I think that, I mean, getting information, there are a couple of asset management companies that provide specific um, products, products for children. And they'll be able to help. I don't want to mention names, but you do your due diligence, you know, ask questions, and you, you'll be able to, you know, get information about some of these things. And in addition to all of I just realized that, you know, we all have talked about investing. Then we last talked about angel investing. Our own businesses might also be some form of investment. I mean, this is outside of the question. Sometimes starting our own businesses might be a form of investment as well you know, things that will be able to pass on to our children, things that will be able to impact the world, of course, provide revenue, provide profitability for us. But I just want to mention that, that that is also some form of investment. And that's why you see Damilola, you see Shalaku, you see myself. I mean, the reason people are hearing about us is because of the businesses that we have started. Not necessarily because, oh, she has worked with this company or has worked with that company. So think about it also and... Um, you know, just I, I just want to mention that in addition to the question about children. I, I see people asking, how do I join? Just go to Instagram, check out Smart Stewards, check out Shola Deshaq. And I think you should follow Shola Pay, follow Shotlast, follow Harvest, follow our individual handles, follow our, uh, our business handles as well. There are tons of things to learn. The women you see here are the women that in 10 years, you are, ah, I just was on a webinar. You know, Forbes list of richest women in the world. Let me interrupt you. We have about three minutes to wrap up this 
this entire session time has really gone so yeah really yeah thank you very much to our panelists i mean we could go on and on exactly. but unfortunately we don't have the whole day so please um follow all our panelists um you can follow sholakwe akinkwelu at for sholakwe akinkwelu then um for shola adeshake it's at shola adeshake for dami lola it's at dami Oloke, yeah, I believe that's correct. And also follow Naira Metrics across all social media platform. And we've been talking about money and investments. Um, Naira Metrics has a deal book, which is a compilation of all deals that happened in 2022. Um, the link is being dropped in the chat box right now, so you can download that. Also, Shola has a book on 40 frugal rules for your financial journey. Um, please get the book. The link is also being dropped in the chat box. Also, Shalakwe has a book, An African Guide to Women's Building Generational Wealth. Her, bu her book is titled Stripped. So you also want to get that as well. And of course, um, Shuttlers is a transportation company that help corporate organization with the ease of moving around. Um, the link to their site is also being dropped in the chat box. And of course, we are here in the studio at Plus TV. Um, for me, you want to talk about Plus TV Africa very quickly before okay, we round Okay, so it's up. Plus TV Africa on all platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on all social media platforms. And please also follow us on YouTube as well. And that's a wrap for today. That's all we can it's, take. It's I really wish we could extend awesome the time. time. Really awesome yeah. time. I've learned so much. My notebook is is full with yeah, so many definitely. things. So thank you again to all our panelists. Thank you to our partners. Naira thank Metrics you. was a fantastic one. We should surely do this again. again. Truly. And truly. to all our listeners and viewers, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. You.